During our half hour together, in addition to showing you action on the racetrack, we like to expand your mind with some equine education. Dr. Christopher Bolt is here to give another super informative anatomy lesson, this time focusing on the shoulder. Tell me a little about the structure and the function of the equine shoulder. The equine shoulder is very similar, uh, but not exactly similar to that as a human. Um, a couple of the main structures we'll take a look at is um, one called the scapula, okay, or we would call it the shoulder blade. It's going to be right in this area here. The next structure is going to be the upper arm bone, which is called the humerus, okay? And there's a joint that's called the scapulohumeral joint, just like in a human. In the human, we have a biceps tendon, which is involved in flexing our arm and raising our arm. And the same thing occurs in a horse. So it has a biceps tendon that just travels right in this area. It also has um, deltoid muscles like we would have. It also has uh, rhomboid muscles like we have here. What's different between a horse and a human is that horses do not have a clavicle or a collarbone like we do. The collarbone in a human is what actually holds the, the, the shoulder girdle to our body. In a horse, it's all musculoligamentous uh, um, stabilization. What types of signs could indicate shoulder problems in my horse? One of the most common things we see with shoulder problems with a horse is going to be altered gait. You know, sometimes they'll be short striding on one side. Remember when a, when a uh, standard bred is traveling along the track, as the track is banked, the front half of the horse's body has to turn a little bit towards the infield part of the track, and the back part is turning a little bit out, so they're running on a little bit of an angle. So standard breds put a lot more um, stress on their right shoulder itself. So short striding, um, cross striding, issues with the leg wanting to move outward more than directly front to back. They can also get um, muscle issues or they can get myositis issues. They can get uh, what are called trigger points or tenderness all in this area here. They could start to have, you know, gait is usually one of the most things that you see. But then you also have pain behaviors where you touch certain points and the, and the horse um, will uh, move away from the pain and the pressure. How can shoulder problems be diagnosed? It's not easy to do x-rays on a horse's shoulder. I mean, they can be done, but obviously um, that's the most, not the most common way. If there's a suspect of a, of a fracture, they can be x-rayed. Most commonly, if they think it's some sort of ligamentous or, or muscle, muscle tear, a diagnostic ultrasound can be performed by the veterinarian. Most of these don't require that. So oftentimes the most important thing is observation. You see the horse walk, you might see the horse trot, you might see the horse run and take a look to see if there's symmetry, which means right to left um, uh, extremities are moving at the same manner, speed, and position. You can stand behind a horse and or watch it walk towards you. You can look for hoof placement to see if the muscles are working. The second thing is you can actually go in and you can actually feel the, um, the borders of the shoulder blade and you could look for any kind of tenderness, okay? You could come down and look at the glenohumeral joint to see if there's any issues. One of the most troublesome areas with standard breads are gonna be the biceps tendon um, because they have to pick their legs up. As I mentioned um, earlier, with long toes, the horse has to pick its uh, legs up a little higher and that could put a tremendous amount of uh, pressure on the biceps tendon. Humans have two pectoral muscles, a pec major and a minor, that kind of make up the chest. The horses have an extra set of those. So they have one here, one here, and one here. These muscles can become contracted and they can become sore to touch. And so when you find areas of the horse where the horse is really uncomfortable, you know that there's probably a tight spot or what we call a trigger point. If that's the case, it's telling you that there's, the muscle is not moving through its full range of motion and that, that area needs to be repaired. What are the appropriate approved treatments available? Oftentimes we'll see veterinarians can come and they can, in, they can inject the shoulder. Sometimes they can do some trigger points to release the muscles. Outside of veterinarian care, some of the best things that we can do would be some sort of manual therapy where we actually get in, we find the areas of the muscle where they're restricted, where they're restricted, they don't have proper blood flow. By, by applying pressure in certain uh, direction, certain length of time, we create what's called an ischemic compression, which means we press on the area. When we relieve pressure, blood returns to the area and helps decrease the muscle tension, 
restore normal blood flow. The second thing you can end up doing, you can, you can actually take the shoulder through a full range of motion. Bring it forward, bring it all the way back, bring it forward, bring it all the way back. And you can also bring it into a full extension this way and cross over. By doing these, we help work all the different muscles, ligaments, and tendons that support the shoulder. How will I know if the condition is improving? Horses are very intuitive. You know, when there's an injury, they're going to stay off that area. They're not going to run in a, in a manner that is typical. So they'll begin to run more easily with um, less restriction. The gait will turn back to normal. The length of the stride will be even. The way they handle themselves, the way they're tacked up, there's not going to be any kind of soreness. They're not going to be soreness for um, any kind of palpation on the horse. Horses shouldn't have real sore spots. So you should notice based upon observation, how they move, palpation, how they feel, and just function, how they're doing in the barn, in the field, and on the track. Thanks, Dr. Bolt. It's always so great having the doctor on post time to learn more about our beautiful four-legged family members. If you would like more information on Dr. Bolt, just log on to his website at, well, drbolt.com. He cares for all types of animals at his office in Long Neck, Delaware, plus he makes barn calls. We appreciate his time being on the show with so many great informative features.